my name is Lizzie Zentner and I'm an admissions counselor here at Colorado State. Tonight's RAM chat is going to focus on applying for admission and it's also going to focus on student financial services, but we also have some students here to talk about their perspective as well. So we've got a lot of stuff going on and we're really excited to have you all here with us. Just so you all know, there are a couple of ways for you to ask us questions tonight. You can ask us a question either on the Facebook event that we created for this event. Make sure you use the hashtag RamChat. You can also ask us on the Facebook group for Colorado State University Office of Admissions. And you can also write on Twitter. So you could also use hashtag RamChat or actually um, at CSU Admissions on there as well. So you can put a couple different options with Twitter. So just make sure you're using hashtag RamChat throughout the whole evening. There is also a little um, button and box that you can use on our admissions website uh, that you can submit questions to as well. So feel free to ask us questions in whatever way is most convenient for you. Um, what we're going to do first is we're going to go ahead and introduce everybody who's on a panel here this evening and then we'll jump right into some facts and figures about applying for admissions. Um, we'll start with me and then we'll introduce Eleni from Student Financial Services and introduce all of our student ambassadors who are here this evening. So to start us off, my name is Lizzie Zentner, and I'm an admissions counselor here at Colorado State. Um, I get the privilege of reading applications as well as traveling for the university. I actually just got back from Alaska on Thursday, so that was a really fun trip. Um, besides Alaska, I also recruit in Las Vegas and the Dallas-Fort Worth area, and I also get the chance to recruit in Louisiana and Alabama as well. So a lot of really fun options for me there. Eleni, do you want to go ahead and take it over? Yeah. Hi everyone, I'm Eleni Beatty and I'm a counselor here in Student Financial Services at CSU. I also coordinate our outreach efforts, so I meet with high school juniors and seniors and their parents as they're visiting CSU so I can answer questions about how to pay for a CSU education. Awesome. Alright, why don't we start with introducing Cody and Rachel first and then we'll go to Kenna and Jacob. All right. Hi, everyone. My name is Rachel. I'm a fifth year engineering education student, and I have been giving tours and being an admissions ambassador for the last two years. Other things that I'm involved in on campus, I was a resident assistant. I run a mentoring program on campus, and I also work in a local cupcake store. <laughs> so good. <laughs> Hello, everyone. My name is Cody Dozier. I'm a junior from Colorado Springs, Colorado. My major is business with a concentration in marketing. Some involvements, I've been involved with our student government, ASCSU, and also a living learning community called Key Explore. All right, my name is Kenna. I am a senior health and exercise science major. I have a Spanish minor. Um, I'm originally from Kansas City, Kansas, and I came out here to study health. I love being active, going up, going snowboarding, and I love to do volunteering through our slice office. Hey all, my name is Jacob Rigsby. I'm a senior here at Colorado State. I'm originally from Ruidoso, New Mexico, um, and I have been an ambassador for the last three years. I'm currently studying business administration and history, and I'm involved with a fraternity here on campus, as well as the University Honors Program. All right. Thanks, everybody. So to kick us off tonight, I'm going to go ahead and walk you through the admissions process, the things that we need in order for you to have a complete application here at Colorado State, what we look for in our applicants, all of that jazz, just to get you kind of excited to apply. Uh, for those of you that might not have filled out an application yet, that is okay. At the very end of this, I'll go through and screen share with all of you so I can kind of walk you through where you can find all of this information, as well as walk you through kind of where to go to fill out everything. So we won't leave you hanging. We'll make sure that you get all of the information you need. All right, so first off, um, at CSU, we admit a very wide range of students, which is really nice, but we do offer something called priority consideration. So what that means is it really just means that you're going to be a strong candidate here at CSU, essentially. So for, to be considered a strong candidate here at Colorado State, we're going to want to see that you've taken four years of math and English. We're also going to want to see that you took three years of a natural science and three years of social studies. And we're also going to want to see that you took two years of the same foreign language as well as two years of an academic elective. So we like seeing that. Along with the priority consideration as well is also a GPA that we look at. We like to see students with a 3.25 or above. And we also like to see test score wise um, about a 22 ACT and about a 1030 SAT without writing. So we kind of like to see those. However, if that is not what you look like, 
that is more than okay. We do something at Colorado State called a holistic admissions review, and that's just a really fancy way of saying that we take into consideration a lot of things when we look at your application. So for example, we're looking at your GPA and we're looking at your test scores, but we also recognize that GPA and test scores sometimes aren't the best indicator of a student's success. So we also look at academic rigor. You know, did you take AP classes? Did you take IB? Did you take any college courses while you were in high school? Any different number of those things can demonstrate academic rigor. We also like to look at trends in grades. So did you start off, you know, an all-A student your freshman year and then kind of taper off and get more Bs and Cs when you were a junior or vice versa? You know, did you start off as a C student when you were a freshman and then get a lot better and start getting all A's when you were a junior. You know, we like to see that upward trend. We like to see consistency um, with grades when we look at applications. We also like to see if you're applying for a competitive major, so biomedical sciences, business, technical journalism, you know, one of those things. We like to see that you've maybe prepared yourself for that as well. So if you've taken any courses that have prepared yourself for that major, we like to see as well. In terms of other things that we look for, we also look for community service and leadership um, as a student as well. So if you participated in community service through your high school or were a member of your high school student government or you know got to be on the board of directors for your high school theater group or anything along those lines, we love to see that students took the initiative there and were able to step up and become leaders on their high school campus communities. So if you have any of that experience, put that um, in the extracurricular section. We really like to know a little bit about that. Uh, something else we like to see is that you'll be able to contribute to a diverse campus community. CSU is a really diverse campus. We want to make sure that our applicants who end up coming to CSU are going to be able to contribute to that and have a positive experience here as well. And then the other thing to consider while you're filling out your application for CSU is to also think about what sets you apart from your peers that are also applying and really highlight on that in your application. You know, did you get to take a trip somewhere that maybe not many other students your age got to do? Did you have an opportunity while you were in high school that maybe not a lot of, a lot of other students had the opportunity to do? You know, lots of things like that that might set you apart and make you unique. Uh, be sure to think about that in the uh, whole process and maybe what that looks like. Uh, so what do we need to have a complete application? You know, in terms of what that looks like, you're going to need a couple different things. The two big things are you're going to need to complete your application and give us your $50 application fee. However, we also don't want $50 to be the one reason that you're not applying to CSU. So if that's going to be any setback for you or your family, we do offer fee waivers. It's going to be a little button when you get to the um, payment part of your application. You can click, I think I qualify for a fee waiver, and it'll walk you through what that looks like. So we try and get that waived to as many people as possible. The other thing as well is we are a common application school, so if you don't want to apply with our institutional application that I'll kind of show you a little bit about later, and you're applying to a lot of other schools who use the common application, you're more than welcome to do that. The common application is an application that about 500 schools all over the country use to submit college applications with, so there's lots of options there if you are applying to a lot of other schools that get a lot of, you know, you want to make sure that you're getting kind of one application into multiple places, that's fine. You're more than welcome to do that. But if you want to use our institutional application, that is great too. We look at both of them the same way. We're also going to want to make sure you submit your ACT and SAT scores to us. We submit either or. We don't preference run one over the other. We submit, um, take either of those. And we're also going to want your official high school transcript. Um, go ahead and start requesting um, your transcripts pretty soon after you've had your application submitted. We really want to make sure that the transcripts get in and kind of are taken care of kind of along the same lines of everything else. And uh, usually that's something that kind of holds up the process a little bit. So make sure that you're getting the transcripts in as well. The last two things that we're going to need are going to be the counselor or teacher recommendation and the personal statement. So the recommendation has to be from a teacher or other school-based official who can really speak to your academic success in high school and how that's going to prepare you for when you're in college. So that can be, you know, your high school college counselor or it can be your math teacher or your history teacher, you know, somebody that can really speak to how you're going to do in college because our first job as admissions counselors is to make sure that you're going to do okay here and you're going to do well academically. That's the biggest thing. So that's the one thing that we really do look for. We only ask for one recommendation, but you can submit as many as you like. We take as many, we take whatever you send us pretty much. So if you want to submit on, you know, three, I'd say that's about a good number um, of uh, recommendations to submit to us. So 
That's okay. If you don't want to, we only require one. In terms of your personal statement, um, it's really kind of whatever you want it to be, which is really nice. We give you a couple prompts on our uh, website, and the nice thing about your personal statement is it really gives us a chance to get to know you um, throughout the application process. So don't let the essay scare you. A lot of people are really nervous about the college essay, but don't let the college essay make you nervous. It's really just a chance for your admissions counselor to get to know you a little bit in the application process. Um, so those are the big six things that you're going to need to submit. So I'll say them all one more time. We're going to need your application and your application fee. We're going to need your test scores and your transcript. And we're also going to need your recommendation form. And we're also going to need your personal statement. So it's a total of six things that we'll need from you. So I hope that that made sense to everybody. I hope that everybody's good to go with that. What I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to share my screen with you all and kind of walk you through um, what the process will look like um, when you choose to get everything started here at CSU. So we'll start the screen share here. All right. And you're going to type in admissions.colostate.edu and click enter. And the first thing you're going to do is go ahead and click apply now. So you're going to go over into apply now. And you've got a couple options here. So what's really nice about our website is that we try and make it as intuitive as possible for you. So if you scroll down and click apply online, it brings you to some options here. So go ahead and scroll down, scroll down, scroll down. All right, so for our undergraduate applicants, which we'll be focusing on today, um, your stuff is going to be right here at the top of the page. But for those students who are applying that are maybe graduate students or transfer students, you're going to go to a little bit of a different place to do this. But we're going to be focusing mainly on undergraduates today, so bear with me. Um, most of our um, freshman students will be applying for fall of 2014, so it's going to be the second one right here. I know this seems confusing because a lot of people think that it's just going to be one application for fall, but this application says it's for summer or fall, so make sure you're clicking the right one. Um, we do get some problems with students submitting applications for the wrong term pretty frequently, um, so we don't want you to have to fill out any extra paperwork. Just make sure you're getting that filled out as much as possible. So if you're filling it out for spring 2014, so the semester that's starting this coming January, you've clicked this button. But we're going to go ahead and click through into fall of 2014, which is going to be this upcoming fall. So what you're going to do is it kind of gives you a little bit of an idea of what all of this looks like um, for undergraduate applications. So this is going to be the login page specifically to access for transfer students, first-time freshmen, second bachelor's candidates, all of that jazz. And what you're going to do is you're going to go click Create an Account. These are for our first-time users. Those of you that have already filled out an application can just click Log In. But then what you'll do is you'll create an account and then go through and start typing in your information up here. So it's pretty intuitive, and then it starts walking you through the application. The application takes about 30 minutes to complete, um, but you'll want to give yourself enough time to be able to sit through and type everything out um, to make sure that we're getting everything that you want to do. So where I'm at right now, I went ahead and to apply now into admissions standards into future freshmen. And we're actually going to show you a little bit about what they've got here in terms of what we look for. This is the page that you'll go to if you want any extra information regarding what I talked about earlier. So what do we look for in students? You know, what kind of SAT, ACT scores are we looking for? Any of those? This is going to be on this page right here. Um, in terms of what we offer in other, in other places as well, we're going to go to deadlines and notifications. So this is going to be the fall semester deadlines for freshman early action, freshman regular decision. All of these deadlines right up here in the first half of this page are going to be the most important ones for you. So the two big ones that we really push in our office are the December 1st early action deadline and the February 1st regular decision deadline. If you apply early action, that's really just a way for you to know your decision a little bit quicker. Um, if you decide to apply early action, it is non-binding. So you do not have to attend Colorado State if you decide to apply early action. Um, the regular decision deadline is February 1st. That's an important deadline um, if you want to make sure that you're good to go for you know, making sure you're good on housing and all that stuff. February 1st is a really good date to keep in your mind for this. So those are our big deadlines regarding our freshman admission for fall 
semesters. So that's a little bit about our website and kind of how you can find a couple different things on here. Um, I'm going to go ahead and X out a screen share now. But what you've been able to do a little bit here over the past couple of minutes is just learn a little bit more about our process, what we look for, um, where to go and find all this information, because our website is fantastic. We give you a lot of information about where to find all the things that you're going to be chatting about and wanting some questions on. So I've talked to you a little bit about admissions, and at this point I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Eleni from Student Financial Services, and she's going to walk you through a little bit about what they do. Um, and then when she's done, we'll open the floor up to your questions that you've been thrown at us on Twitter and Facebook. So go ahead and take it away, Eleni. Hey, everyone. So I know that was a lot of information that Lizzie gave you guys, and now I want to talk a little bit about the financial aspects of paying for our ACSU education. Because we know for all of you, it's got to be the right fit for you academically, socially, and financially for you and for your family. So I'm going to kind of pick up where Lizzie left off a little bit with as you're going through the admissions application process, talking a little bit about financial aid. So I'm going to start with talking about the FAFSA. We like to use lots of fun little acronyms and words when it comes to financial aid. So the FAFSA is the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. And this is probably something you may have heard about from your friends or your siblings in college or maybe your, your counselor. So what you do is you actually go to the FAFSA website, and I'll show that to you here in just a minute, in the spring, and complete the free application for federal student aid with your parents. And there's information on there where you list up to several colleges, and the information is sent to CSU. So what happens on our end is in the spring, usually around February or early March, we'll start reviewing that information for our admitted incoming freshman students and begin communicating with those students. So you'll definitely want to stay on top of your CSU email and you'll want to stay on top of your RAMWeb. And RAMWeb is the student portal here at CSU. And one of the things that you can see in that portal is your financial aid status. And some schools have different phrases and different words for their financial aid. Some call them a financial aid award. Some schools refer to it as a financial aid package. And we call it a financial aid award at CSU. So what will happen is that we will be emailing with you, kind of keeping you informed on where we are with that process and letting you know when we have your financial aid award ready for you and your parents. And we'll also send you a financial aid award letter and a packet in the mail as well. So those are specific to federal financial aid programs. So what I want to do is go to our website, which is sfs.colostate.edu. And we're going to show you guys just a couple of things with next steps and financial aid. Just a second as I try to screen share with you guys. Okay, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, so I'm on sfs.colostate.edu. I want to take you guys over here to applying for aid. So some of the next steps, as I was saying, when you complete the financial aid application, that's how the schools determine your financial aid eligibility with grants, perhaps student loans, maybe work study. And so those are just some of the different ways that people um, identify resources to help pay for college. So if you go right over here to the types of aid, there's some really good information when we talk about grants, what kind of grants are there, who's eligible, and how you become eligible. But again, everything starts with the FAFSA, the Free Application for Federal Student Aid. So I'm going to go back over here to types of aid and go down to the loan area there. 
and you can see where you can read about student loan programs that you might be familiar with, parent loan programs, lots of great information there. So again, for a lot of students, it's a combination of these different kinds of resources on how one can pay for a CSU education. And I know one place that everyone likes to go is the scholarship section. So I'm going to transition just a little bit here to the scholarship section. So there are different kinds of scholarship opportunities. There are scholarship opportunities here at CSU and scholarship opportunities outside of CSU. And what I mean by that is that there's opportunities for scholarships through companies and organizations and individuals, perhaps in your community or across the country. So there's some great tools on our website to help you search for some of those scholarships. But for now, I'm going to concentrate just a little bit on scholarship opportunities at CSU. As Lizzie mentioned earlier, there's a regular decision date where you need to have your completed admissions application in by February 1st. That's also a really important date to be considered for admissions-based scholarships here at CSU. So I'm going to go right over here to scholarships for entering Colorado resident freshmen. So this is a little bit more specific to our Colorado residents. So there's some great information here about some of those scholarship opportunities where there's not a separate scholarship application that you're reviewed for some of these scholarships by virtue of having your completed admissions application. So that's a great place to look. For our non-resident students, I want to show you just a little bit of information as well about the different scholarship opportunities. Again, these do not require a separate scholarship application. Um, I am going to talk about just a minute about some scholarship opportunities at CSU that do require a separate application, so you want to make note of that. But again, these are for our non-resident students through the admissions application process. Another scholarship opportunity for CSU students for our new and our continuing students is through something called the CSU scholarship application. So go right here. It's also called the CSU SA. So it's pretty easy to remember. So to be considered for different scholarship opportunities through the various departments here at CSU, including student financial services, every year through the student portal called RAMWeb that I mentioned earlier that a student has access to once you've begun the admissions application process, every year beginning December 1st, the scholarship application opens up there in RAMWeb and is due March 1st at 11 p.m. Mountain Time. So to be considered for scholarships through the different departments every year, you want to fill out this CSU scholarship application. And there's kind of a long list here that you can scroll on down here, and it'll list the different scholarship opportunities. But again, you just fill out this one scholarship application, which is due March 1st. March 1st is another important date because we want to ensure that everyone has their FAFSA here by March 1st as well. So I'm going to close out here. Okay. Okay. So, sorry about that. <laughs> so again, different opportunities, different resources. So for most families and for most students, scholarship opportunities, uh, maybe working over the summer, saving some of those resources, maybe your parents or your family have a college savings plan, and then of course filling out the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid every year. So taking that combination of resources to help make it work at CSU for you financially as well. So Lizzie, I think I'm going to pass it on over to you. Excellent. All right. Well, we'll keep going then. This is now going to be the open forum for questions and answers that you have. So we're going to go ahead and start off with a question about admissions. This is from Kenna, and she asks, 
is the recommendation form on the website covered with a recommendation letter from the teacher on the Common App, or do you have to do both? So the way that this works is you actually only can, you don't have to submit a letter and the recommendation form. You can just submit either or. So you can pick whichever one you think would be most beneficial to you. Um, so it's definitely not both of them. You can just pick either or, whichever is most comfortable for you, Kenna. So. Um, we're going to go ahead and head into a question for our student ambassadors now. Stephanie would like to know, do you have a Greek life system? Uh, I can talk about that one. I am actually a part of uh, Greek life here on campus. It's called fraternity and sorority life. And currently there is just over 40 different um, fraternities and sororities. And each one kind of has their own specific uh, interests, whether it's, um, there's a few different ones that are, you know, agricultural focused, so folks that, um, are interested in agricultural sciences, and then there's folks that are um, typically different uh, ethnic groups and things like that. So there's a number of different fraternities and sororities that folks can get involved in here on campus, and they provide really great opportunities for leadership, giving back to the community. Um, today, as I'm going through job offers and job um, interviews, I talk more about my Greek experience than probably anything else. So we do have them, and they're a great opportunity. Uh, and only about 10% of our campus uh, is in a fraternity or a sorority, but they do have a positive impact here on campus. Great. Thanks so much, Jacob. So this is going to be a question for Eleni um, from Student Financial Services. And we've gotten a lot of questions about Western Undergraduate Exchange, so the WUI program, mm -hmm. and how all of that works. And Margot asks, how do I make sure that I'm even considered for the WUI program during the application process? Do you want to touch on that a little bit? Yeah, absolutely. So um, obviously one needs to actually be a resident of one of these states for the Western Undergraduate Exchange Program. And that information is on the admissions website under the cost and financial aid section. And it's also on our website that I showed you guys earlier. Um, and to be considered for the Western Undergraduate Exchange Scholarship, you actually don't have to do anything special just by virtue of applying, be a resident of one of those states, and then there's qualifying test scores and a qualifying GPA range. That chart is actually on the website. So just by virtue of submitting your test scores and your uh, transcripts and being from one of those states and having all of your admissions application materials in by February 1st, you're automatically going to be reviewed for that program. Um, we do also accept uh, resubmissions of test scores and GPA up through August 1st for reconsideration. So kind of keep that in mind. If, if you're close or maybe just a few points off on a test score, you can resubmit that, but you want to make sure and get that over to us absolutely no later than August 1st for consideration for the WUI scholarship program. Thanks so much, Eleni. So we've got another application question from Kenna. Um, she asks, does the Common App cover the personal statement? And yes, it does. So that's good. You don't necessarily have to worry about submitting multiple things for that as well. So yes, the Common App does cover the personal statement. All right, we're going to go to another question for our student ambassadors. Paige asks, what should I do if I can't come visit campus? I got this one. So. Um, that is a great question. There's lots of opportunities to still be able to come or to see parts of our campus and still get to see what we have to offer. Our website is a great resource. And so being able to check out the Colorado State website, the housing website has a ton of information about the residence halls, as well as you can look at blueprints and you can do uh, like video tours of some of the residence halls. So that's really neat. Um, and then, of course, doing things like this, so watching our videos or doing our other RAM chat sessions. Um, it gives you a great opportunity to get to talk with students and get their perspective. Also, some of our counselors will travel to your state and your area. So if you apply and you're admitted, we have admitted student receptions in the spring, which are great opportunities because most of those will also have your counselor and a professor from CSU as well as a student. One of our, one of our ambassadors on our team will be there as well, most likely. Awesome. All right. Uh, so there's another question about the application, and Rose asks, is there an application fee waiver for early action? Yes, there is. There's a fee waiver regardless of which term you apply. There will be a fee waiver for the application regardless of when you apply. So that's good to know. Glad you asked that, Rose. 
Um, I'm going to go over to another question for Student Financial Services. And Tashi asks, does CSU offer any kinds of diversity scholarships? Yeah, that's actually a really good question. There's such a variety of scholarship opportunities, again, both inside and outside of CSU. Um, again, with the CSU scholarship application, when one is filling that scholarship application out, a student is actually being considered potentially for hundreds of different scholarship opportunities on campus that have a variety of different kinds of eligibility criteria. It can be anything from your major, your minor, if you had a family member who attended CSU, uh, could even ask, has um, questions about your, your background or perhaps your ethnicity, as you asked. There's even questions about if you have uh, certain kinds of you know, even your medical conditions and, and scholarships that are specific to that. And then there's also, of course, the scholarship opportunities outside of CSU. And again, through our website, one can search for scholarships outside of CSU. But what we do is when students receive scholarships from companies or organizations or individuals outside of the university, we gather all that information and put it on our database so potential students like you guys can also look for scholarships. Um, you can do a keyword search, for example, and find some scholarship opportunities that way. All right, thank you so much. Uh, another question for our student ambassadors. This is a three-parter, so bear with me here, folks. As a freshman, is it difficult to get into classes? Is it hard to get into full classes? And can you actually graduate in four years? All right, I can go ahead and answer this, or if anyone wants to add anything. Um, so I know freshmen do sign up last out of all four years of students for classes, um, but usually they are more of the core classes that we offer here at CSU. So there is multiple times um, days that it's offered, so it's pretty easy to fit into your schedule. Um, also, when you come the summer before your freshman year for orientation, you actually sit down with a counselor and you get to kind of walk through um, signing up for classes um, right there on campus with your counselor um, as long as you can come to that orientation. Um, so that's very helpful. Um, I know as a student one thing that um, I've also done is um, get on waiting lists, um, but for the most part every class I've ever signed up for or got on a waiting list for, um, usually that will transfer very nicely into my schedule and students are always kind of changing their class around um, or class schedule, so it's pretty easy to kind of get started into those classes. Um, I know that was the first part, so I don't know if you can repeat the rest or if anyone else wants to jump in. Yeah, I can jump in on that last question about finishing in five years. So I did mention before that I'm a fifth year engineering education student. So one of the things that I notice with a lot of students who go beyond four years is the fact that they are expanding in what they want to do. So it's not just one major, they usually have a couple minors or a double major. So with my program specifically, I'm getting my engineering degree and my teaching license at the same time. So that's why it's taking me five years. So I know that's the case for a lot of students who go into five years. It is definitely possible to finish in four, though. Yeah, just kind of add, adding to that, you can have multiple degrees and still graduate in four years. I'm double majoring in business and history, and I'm getting done in four years. So it really is up to you and your track and how long you want to continue your education or what you exactly want to study. So it can depend, but you can get it done in four years. All right. Thanks, everybody. So Michelle asks, I'm a senior, but I won't be able to attend until 2015. Should I apply now or wait? And will I have to retake the ACT? No, you will not have to retake the ACT, which is really good. Um, in terms of when you should apply, that's really up to you. What's nice about what we do is if you do apply for the fall semester of 2014 and then decide that you don't want to attend for another year, you can defer your enrollment up to a year. So you can do that if you'd like to. And what's nice about applying for the fall of 2014 and then deferring your enrollment is all of this kind of college stuff is in your head already and you're kind of in the mindset to get everything filled out and done now. So it's kind of nice to be able to know even when you go into having that extra year that you're going to be able to go to college when you're done. So I, in my opinion, I'd say go ahead and just apply and then defer your enrollment a year, but it really is up to you, Michelle, and what you want to do. So that's going to be up to you regarding that. 
Um, so I'm going to jump into another question for Student Financial Services. Katie asks, how many provost scholarships are given out annually, and what about the presidential, the deans, you know, rough estimates for that, Eleni? Well, that's actually a really good question, and the answer can actually kind of vary year to year. Um, and, and I can do delve into another screen share as well that actually the criteria for those particular scholarships for our non-residents are it's actually pretty cut and dry. So either you're eligible and fall into one tier or you or you don't. So we don't have like a, a cutoff where okay we've given 20 provost scholarships this year and we're not giving any more. As long as one is eligible, you have all your admissions application uh, information in by February 1st, you're eligible you're going to fall in and get that scholarship. And then uh, just to kind of elaborate a little bit more on some of those scholarships, it kind of goes along with your question, is these scholarships are renewable. So what that means is that they're usually a scholarship that's good for four years, you know, at the eight semesters, and as long as you meet certain kind of basic grade point average criteria and complete a certain amount of credit hours every year, you don't have to reapply will just recognize that you meet the criteria and go through those eight semesters. So there's not really a set number or a cutoff, and I, I don't even have an actual estimate of how many scholarships we had last year. But again, I can tell you, as long as you're eligible, you meet all the criteria, you're good. Awesome. All right, this is another question for our students. Michelle asks, what are some different clubs and organizations that CSU has to offer? Great question, Michelle. So we have tons and tons. We actually have over 550 clubs and organizations here on campus. And we have everything from foreign language clubs to clubs that are centered around people um, getting to and from the ski resorts. And our largest club is actually the Harry Potter Alliance. So if you love Harry Potter, we have that for you. You can actually play Quidditch. But we have a lot. What are, what are your experiences, Rachel? Um, so some of the clubs that I was actually involved in, I was a part of youth ministry on campus. So that's definitely, they have a ton of those. So if that's something you're interested in. Um, but yeah, that Snow Riders Club <laughs> and Harry Potter are pretty popular. Um, we have a Humans vs. Zombies that's very popular throughout the school year. And they play a week-long game of basically tag with Nerf guns. And it's really fun on campus. So that one's pretty popular, too. Also, you can get involved in club athletics as well, um, which kind of fall under a similar umbrella. But these are different sports that compete on a national basis. And it can be anything from soccer to lumberjacking or even uh, frisbee golf if you're interested in that. So it can be a number of different things, but those are some more clubs if you're more interested in athletics as well. Awesome. Great. Okay, so Brianna asks, is the academic reflection the same as the writing supplement on the common application? Brianna, I am so glad you asked about this because I think the academic reflection is one of the best things about our application. The academic reflection is not the same thing um, as your personal statement, essentially. However, what the academic reflection does is it allows you to just tell us about your experience in high school. So this is your chance to explain to us if you have any, you know, if you're a normally a BA student and you have a random D somewhere on your transcript or you had a family member die and had that really affect your grades your second semester, your sophomore year, you know, any of those kind of anomalies in your transcript, this is your chance to explain that to us. Um, we always say in the office that we don't know anything about you that you don't tell us, so you would rather tell us about what happened to you that semester than leaving us to just be kind of curious about it and then have that maybe affect whether or not we admit you so just tell us it's not going to make you look bad to admit to a weakness in that sense so do keep that in mind that's what the academic reflection is for is to just let us know a little bit more about you academically so this is your chance to tell us so I'm so glad you asked that Brianna thank you uh, someone just asked when the next RAM chat is. The next RAM chat is going to be November 13th, so tune in again, everybody. It's going to be really fun. We're going to try and stick to the way of doing more themed types of things so that you can come and watch us if it's something you want or if it's not. You don't have to. So that's going to be when the next RAM chat is, so November 13th. Mark your calendars. It's going to be fun. Uh, for Eleni, what kind of financial aid is available for transfer students? 
That's actually a really good question. I'm glad you asked. It's, it's actually quite similar to a new or an incoming uh, freshman student. And there's also scholarship opportunities that are indeed specific to our awesome transfer students. Um, so kind of depending on when someone is transferring, like I'll first speak to if someone is transferring to CSU for the fall semester, you really want to follow all of those same timelines and guidelines with having your admissions application in. To be considered for transfer student scholarships, you definitely want to have everything in, again, for a fall transfer, no later than June 1st. But as far as awarding financial aid and doing the FAFSA, the free application for federal student aid, really want to have that done by March 1st. And that's every year, whether you're new or you're a transfer student or a continuing student. And a little side note there, I know as some people are thinking of, about March 1st, I don't have my taxes done then, or my parents definitely don't have their taxes done by then. That's totally okay because you can do estimates on the FAFSA for financial aid eligibility. So we'll start making those financial aid awards again for new students, whether you're a freshman or a transfer student in March. Uh, the scholarship opportunities, when you go to our website, the sfs.colorstate.edu, you can go to the scholarship section and there's an area specific to our transfer students. Um, so there's the RAM transfer scholarship that is by virtue of having your completed admissions application material, so no separate scholarship applications needed for that. Uh, another scholarship opportunity is for the Phi Theta Kappa members, and so that could be an opportunity for our transfer students as well. Um, there's honors programs. There's a really amazing transfer program with mentoring and so on at CSU. We absolutely love our transfer students and really kind of have you almost in like in your own community where you can really bond and, and have kind of a separate experience or a more integrated experience with our students. Um, if someone's transferring kind of mid-year in the spring semester, so let's say you're going somewhere in the fall and you're transferring to CSU in January, so if you already have your FAFSA done for your current school, you just go in, log on, and you're just going to add CSU Fort Collins. And when you're going through the admissions process and you're being admitted, we're going to pull that FAFSA information for you. And we'll send you an email to your school email account. Uh, you'll be monitoring your financial aid and RAM web, like I mentioned earlier. So we're going to actually start doing that here soon around mid-November. So if someone's thinking about transferring in the spring, this is a great time to be doing that. All right, awesome. So we're going to move into another question for our students. Joseph wants to know if we have any sort of cycling team. We do have a cycling team. We have a couple different ones, actually. We have a road cycling team, um, and they compete nationally as well. They are actually doing nationals this year in Richmond, Virginia. Uh, so they're going to try to make their way out there if they qualify because they compete against schools in this west region. And also we have a mountain biking uh, kind of club as well. All right, great. So we've got a couple extra questions of students who are asking again about, um, I've heard a lot about the WUI, but could you explain it a little bit more? Um, the nice thing about these chat sessions is that they're actually going to go and be YouTube videos when we're done with these. So we actually did address WUI a little bit earlier in the chat. So if you really are curious about what that looks like at CSU, you can go ahead and look at that right after we're done. We actually link it up on our website per each question when we're done with it, so we make sure that we make it really easy for you to find. So make sure you check us out after this to get that answered. Uh, we have a question from Rowan, and he asked, how do you apply for graduate school, and what about GRE scores that I'll need? In terms of graduate school, we focus more on undergraduate admissions for this chat, but if you want more information about that, you can go into our admissions website, and they have a great link for graduate students. So if you are on this chat and you're interested in what the graduate admissions process looks like, check out our website and then get in contact with someone directly from the Graduate School of Colorado State, and it'll make your life a lot easier to go right through them. So keep that in mind. Um, one student asked, and I, I think our ambassadors will be able to address this a little better than I could. Um, they would like us to explain what RAMWeb is. Is it just for the applications or will I use it after I've 
um, at CSU. Yes, you're going to use RamWeb all the time. <laughs> it is something that you use starting when you first apply until you graduate. Um, it's a good place. That's where you go to register. It's where you find out all of your grades, your financial aid, where you can pay your bill. It's where you can, I don't know, check your progress of where you are and how many credits that you have. You use it for just about everything. Um, that's also where you keep your updates on your addresses as well as any phone numbers and texting situations so the whole school can text you if we get a snow day or something exciting like that. So um, that's RamWeb, you use it all the time. Um, also with the RamWeb, sorry Lizzie, um, one really helpful thing that I've used it for a lot is applying for jobs on campus. Um, so um, uh, places on campus um, as well as off campus can post student jobs, anything from babysitting, nan nannying to front desk positions. Um, so that's a really good spot, especially if you are looking for a job to start your freshman year, you need a little extra money. Um, you can definitely start applying to those the summer before you come to campus. You can get some interviews set up and go ahead um, and get started in a job your freshman year. Awesome. All right, we've got a couple questions about what if I'm having trouble logging in and who should I talk to about that. If you are having trouble logging into an application or something along those lines, you're going to want to email the admissions email address with your name and your birthday. So you'll want to email admissions, so A-D-M-I-S-S-I-O-N-S -S -S at colostate, C-O-L-O-S-T-A-T-E dot E-D-U. Or you can also call us at our main phone number, that's 970 491-6909 and we'll be able to help you with any of those questions. So just give us a call and we'll get that looked at for you. Uh, we had a student ask, do I have to send my letters of recommendation electronically? We would prefer for you to send them electronically because um, we're trying to go paperless in the whole application process. However, if you do want to send them snail mail or something along those lines, you can do that as well. It's really what's most convenient for you, um, although we do prefer them to be sent electronically um, if that works for you. So, uh, We've got another question from a student who wants to know, how is adjusting from being a high school student to being a college freshman? All right, well, um, I know that the experience is a little different for everyone, so um, I think that definitely depends on um, kind of how you adjust to situations. Uh, for my personal experience, when I came here, I definitely missed home a lot. I'm from Kansas City, so it's pretty far. I didn't get to see my family that much. Um, but I found that getting involved in a lot of those clubs on campus that we have, um, kind of similar to things that I've done in high school, really helped me create a community and make it feel a lot more like home. Um, and eventually from then now I just I love it here and I think that it um, definitely translates you know from what you did in high school to what you do in college and what you're going to enjoy. So definitely find those um, groups to get involved in to make it an easier transition. And speaking off of Kenna with the groups that you can get involved in um, in order to make it a small or better transition, we have things where if you want to live or you're required to live in the residence halls and so you can live with groups that share your similar interests. They're called living learning communities. And we have a lot of them, and we have things that are designed for art students or honor students, engineers. I live, yeah, there we go. <laughs> we, I lived in a group for just undeclared students. So my whole hall, we had no idea what we wanted to do. And we kind of had one class together that we took and tried to figure it out together. So it was a lot of fun because it made that transition easier because we shared similar interests and were able to kind of communicate better that way. And even just on top of uh, getting involved in stuff, what's really great about Colorado State, in my opinion, as an out-of-state student, is the folks out here are so, so nice and open and friendly, and they want to meet new people as well. So just the culture of CSU and the people out here really make that transition a little bit easier. Um, there will be you know, some tough times. Uh, school is a little bit tougher in college, but overall, like the people out here getting involved really makes the transition a lot easier. Awesome. Thanks, everybody. We have a question asking, who do you think should write my letter of recommendation? And I mentioned this a little bit earlier, but it really should just be from somebody who can speak to your academic success in high school and to how well you're going to do in college. We really want to get to know you as a student, but our first job as admissions officers is to really make sure that we're going to be able to transition you from the high school academic environment to the college academic environment a little bit better. So we want to make sure that you're 
person who's writing this recommendation for you can speak to that and speak to how that transition is going to be working for you. So a teacher or a school-based official is usually the best one for that. However, if you want to submit more, you're more than welcome to. Um, if you would like to submit up to three, you can submit them from, you know, an extra one from a theater director or a coach or something, you know, anything along those lines. But at least one has got to be from that person that can speak to your academic success. So keep that in mind. So, oh, this is a good one. This is for you, Eleni. Um, Cheyenne asked, do you offer a marching band scholarship? As a matter of fact, CSU does have a marching band scholarship. Um, and, you know, I don't have the specifics right here in front of me, but I believe that is something that you can find on our website. But I have indeed seen quite a few students with marching band scholarships. So that's a great question to ask. And um, I think you probably want to connect with that resource at CSU, either through our website or contacting someone through admissions who can give you a little bit more guidance on who to speak to directly at CSU that represents the marching band. Awesome. Thanks, Eleni. So Brianna asks, and this will be a good one for our students, uh, do you have an equestrian riding team? How good is your swim team? So two kind of completely different things. But <laughs> if you could touch on them, that would be great. So as far as the equestrian question goes, um, we do have a couple different options for that. So we do have a men and a women's polo team. So if you're interested in playing polo, and that's riding on horses polo, not water <laughs> polo. Um, but So that is a great option. We also have a mountain riders club as well that you have the opportunity to take out some horses. And then um, we do have a group, a small group, that takes the polo team horses out to ride as well. So um, that is a definitely a really great opportunity through our equine sciences major as well as our animal sciences um, or even just to join the polo team. Do, do any of you want to touch on the swim team? Do you know anything about it? or? Um, I'm not positive on how good they are, but I know it is a club sport, so um, it is not a sport. Division one means that you can get scholarships for it um, to participate in the in the um, swim team, but it is a club sport, so they do compete against other um, universities, um, but unfortunately there are no scholarships offered, although I'm not positive how well they do. I don't know if you know, Lizzie. Um, I'm not sure how great they are, I'm not sure how good they are, but I do know that we offer it as a club sport. So I think that would be a good thing to go check out online and see if we can get some more information about that. Awesome. All right, in terms of another admissions question, we have one that says, if I do not have any C's or D's, do I not need to use or write the academic reflection? And the nice thing about the academic reflection, I mean, if you want to really focus on one part of your academic career and kind of why that happened to you, that's great. But if high school is more, a little bit, you know, easier for you and you're we're a pretty consistent A-B student, you know, just tell that. You know, use that to tell it. It's if, again, you know, we don't know anything about you that you don't tell us. So that's just another thing for you to tell us a little bit more about yourself in as well. So keep that in mind. It's a good thing to fill out, even if you don't have any C's or D's on your transcript. All right, another question for our students. How good is the food at CSU and in Fort Collins? <laughs> it's, uh, it's really, really good. We were I fighting love, over that we question. Were, this, is a, this is obviously a topic that we all are very passionate about, so we were seeing who was going to talk first. But the food at the residence hall is really, really great. We have six different residence halls that all have kind of different menu styles. And when you buy a meal plan, you can go to any of those six different residence halls. So you have a lot of options when it comes to on-campus dining. And even um, in the new student center that we're going to get, there will be dining options as well. So you have a lot of different options in terms of on-campus. And off-campus, I think each one of us has our own favorite place. Um, but there is more restaurants in Fort Collins per capita than anywhere else besides like San Francisco or some crazy statistic like that. Um, also with the residence hall dining, um, a couple things we do a really good job offering um, gluten-free, dairy-free options or vegetarian. So if you do have any um, nutritional needs like that, you can definitely put that on your application um, or um, have lots of options here as well. Um, and a couple other events that we do in the dining halls, which I loved when I was living on campus. Um, different halls would put on different nights. So there would be um, like a Hawaiian night and they would have a huge bar full of fruit with like salads and fruit salads. And um, one time we had like Mexican food and it was a mariachi band there. So they make it a lot of fun to kind of go get food and hang out with your friends. 
Awesome. All right. Well, you can tell most people really enjoy food here in Fort Collins. So if you are a foodie, you're going to do great here. Just letting you know. Um, so the nice thing is, and we're actually double checking. We do have women's swimming and diving division one. So we were wrong about that. We've got that. So good to know. And men's and club and club. So there we go. Got that answer for you. A little bit crazy there, but yes, we do have it at the division level. So very exciting. Awesome. I didn't know that. See, I'm learning new stuff all the time too. It's great. Um, so someone just asked, how can I sign up for more information about CSU? If you go to our admissions website, on the upper left-hand corner of the website, there's a little button that says Get Info. Click that, and it'll leave you to a bunch of information, email, phone number, address, and you fill that out and we'll send you stuff um, with whatever is most convenient for you, whether that's contacting you via email or at your address. So we got some options for you. Um, for the students, and I'd love if all of you could touch on this briefly, uh, what is your favorite part or thing about CSU? All right, I'll go first. <laughs> um, well, one of my favorite parts is um, actually the community that CSU is in. Um, so we do a really good job working well with um, the area in Fort Collins, other groups. We give back to the community. We do a lot of um, volunteer events. We do a canned food drive on campus that pretty much all the student organizations and even just colleges and majors get involved in. Um, and then along with that, just in the community, we do a lot of, um, or students get involved in a lot of events. We do, or there's a lot of um, like music festivals in Old Town, the downtown here in Fort Collins. Um, and there's always students, you'll go out and see um, other students at those music festivals or again, food events down in Old Town. So it's really fun to kind of go out in the community and see other CSU students and professors um, out and about. Yeah, and one of my favorite things about Fort Collins is definitely the location. Um, we're in northern Colorado, about 45 minutes north of Denver, um, at the base of the Rockies. So it's beautiful, beautiful scenery. Uh, the feeling of the town and kind of the layout is a little bit more spread out, which is something that I really appreciate. And there's so many outdoor activities that are so close by um, that I really love the location. Like, we can see Rocky Mountain National Park from our campus, um, which is pretty cool, in my opinion, uh, as an out-of-state student. I would say that my favorite thing about Colorado State is the people. Um, I come from Washington State, close to Seattle, and it's pretty gloomy there, so people can be kind of cranky. And so when I came into Fort Collins, I just loved that everyone was so smiley, and they just wanted to wave to you. When you got to a stop sign, they're like, it's your turn. Whereas in Washington, it's like, I'm going to go. So um, it's really nice to have people who are so supportive and really friendly here in the community. It makes me really want to give that back to another person who's coming to CSU. Yeah, the location and the people were one of the reasons, or two of the reasons why I chose CSU. But another one that I've just fallen in love with for, with CSU is the traditions we have. Our school was founded in 1870, and we have actually have a lot of traditions. We have a program called 70 Things to Do Before You Graduate, so it's just kind of a bucket list for students com to complete. And there's some silly things on there, like hugging a tree uh, in one of our Sherwood forests, which is pretty neat. But we also have things like wearing a Forever Green t-shirt, which is your t-shirt that represents kind of your class year. It's different every year. It has the fight song on the back of it. There's just a lot of traditions that I've, I've found out about, and I love them. So it's fun to kind of check off things on that list. All right, thank you all for touching on that. Um, we're wrapping up here. We're kind of winding down with a little um, the last couple bit of questions we have. If for some reason your question was not answered tonight, we will get it answered for you and get it put up on Twitter, on Facebook, on some other way um, for you to get it. No, but we're going to start kind of winding down now. Um, for Eleni, this is very specific, <laughs> very specific question. Um, but a student would like to know what kind of financial aid um, or scholarships, if any, can I receive with a 3.6 GPA and a 27 on the ACT? Well, you're right. That is a very specific question. Um, and the answer kind of actually can vary a little bit based on where you're from. And what I mean by that is um, for our non-resident students, someone touched on earlier, some of the different scholarship opportunities that are specific to grade point average and test scores. So if you go over to either the admissions website or CSU's website, or I'm sorry, sfs.colostate.edu to the scholarship section, if you're a non-resident, 
click on that entering non-resident and expand that information and it's going to give you the breakdown based on your GPA and your test score. So there's the, the provost, the dean scholarship, and the presidential. For our resident students um, with X kind of test scores in GPA, there's some scholarship opportunities through like the Green and Gold Scholarship, for example. So I would go take a look at that on our website as well. And you know, some of those scholarships, they are kind of you know, quite competitive. We have a lot of really high achieving, wonderful students here at CSU. But um, with X kind of test scores and that uh, GPA, I would say go to that website or feel free to call our office and have that conversation so we can talk to you in a little bit more detail about you. And um, you can call, our web, call us at 970-491-6321 and talk to our counselor or you can even ask for me and I would love to talk to you more about it. All right, thank you. Um, the last three big questions here are going to be for our students. Um, the first one, how far are the ski slopes? They are within a few hours, so um, I think the nearest, the closest one is about an hour, I think, yeah. about an hour, um, and then there are some that are about two hours away, and um, that Snow Rider stuff that Cody had mentioned earlier actually gets groups together to go transport, do um, carpooling up to the mountains, so good use of vehicles there. Mm -hmm. yeah, they're really close. To add a little bit, um, so the one that's an hour that is um, very, very close, most students will drive up to kind of the bigger ones, um, Brett, Keystone, um, A Basin, um, Aspen, Vale, Copper. Those are about two to two and a half hours, and they are really easy to get. You just have to go down through Denver, so um, pretty easy to get up there, and there are some good deals on um, ski passes, so if you get those early, um, not through CSU, but just through some deals around town, you'll definitely find that when you get to campus, so. Awesome, and I know two of you have um, are a, a either about to experience study abroad or have already studied abroad, so I'm gonna throw this question at the both of you. Um, Christine wants to know, how does the study abroad program work at CSU? So maybe, Cody, could you talk a little bit about leading up to it and then kind of talking about your experience after you went abroad? Sure thing. So I am planning, or I am, kind of weird, it just happened a couple of days ago, but I'm officially studying abroad in Rome, Italy next spring, so I definitely am going through that process right now. It's uh, pretty easy. We have a, an office dedicated to studying abroad. It's called the Office for Mm. Education. Education Abroad, that's what it is, thank you. Education Abroad Office, and they are there just as a service to you to help out. You pretty much, the beginning steps are figuring out where you want to go. You can go anywhere. It's pretty crazy, and it's kind of intimidating to pick, but you can go to Germany for business, or Italy for art, or the Bahamas for ecotourism, kind of cool, um, or just anywhere you want to go that doesn't even relate to your major, you can. But you have to kind of plan out why you want to go to this place, what your financial, um, what your financials look like if you can afford a certain type of place. But once you figure out where you want to go, then you go to the office and they'll help you kind of plan it out. There's, a, there's an application process that you go to. It's a little less in depth than the CSU application, so don't worry about that. But uh, once you get that set, it's pretty much, if you're accepted, then they'll continue uh, helping you after that to get ready to go. And Kenna, if you want to talk about just your experience with it. <laughs> sure, thanks Cody. Um, so I went um, studied abroad in Chile. I lived in Viña del Mar for a semester. Um, I'm a Spanish minor, so it was pretty easy for me to get all my credits set up in my classes because they were um, just Spanish classes. Um, so with the study abroad, um, kind of going off of what Cody says, the biggest advice I have for any student that knows they're interested in studying abroad from freshman year, um, definitely talk to your advisor and let them know that because there are some of the core curriculum classes um, that can actually be waived by studying abroad. Um, so you can save yourself a couple credits, um, another thing to help yourself <clears throat> make sure you graduate in four years. Um, so with my experience, I went abroad, I told my advisor right away, so I got all my classes transferred. You can choose to go through a CSU program, um, but we also accept credits from pretty much any just affiliate program. There's an entire wall of pamphlets you can choose from. Pick a program, pick a place to go, um, things that you want in your program. Um, so I went into Chile. I had an awesome time. Um, I learned so much Spanish. I lived with a host family. Um, they were very helpful with um, making sure I didn't speak English. They actually didn't speak any themselves, so it was definitely a big adjustment. 
Um, and then I went to classes at a university there, and they were awesome about um, also giving you time to travel because they know that is part of the experience. So I was able to travel through a lot of Chile and go to um, Bolivia and Argentina as well. Um, and then when I got back, you also are going to be working with the abroad office to make sure that all your classes do transfer. They're going to want some of the uh, material that you had when you were abroad to look at those classes and what kind of work you were doing there. So it's a pretty um, easy process as long as you kind of keep track of your applications and all the work that you're doing along the way. One thing I did want to add on is that you can go for a semester program, either fall or spring. You can go for a full long program, which would be the whole academic year, or summer programs. There are also other things that maybe if it doesn't work out with your major, there are short breaks that you can go on, which are during spring break or winter break, but those aren't actually through the Education Abroad Office. Those are alternative spring breaks. So if you want to look into more of that, just go to the website at CSU. All right, so the last big question that we have for all of you, I'm not sure if any of you are in the honors program, um, but Joshua wants to know how does your honors program work and how can I apply for it? Yeah, I can answer that. I'm actually a part of the honors program right now. I'm wrapping that up um, next semester. And how the honors program works is that if you have a certain GPA and a certain text, test score, you're automatically accepted into the program, and you can choose to accept that or not. Or you can apply to the program if your GPA and test score might be a little bit lower. I was one of those folks that had to apply to get into the honors program. And then once I got into that um, program, I was able to receive a scholarship from the honors program. Um, I was able to register for classes earlier. My class sizes were a little bit smaller, so I had major specific honors courses where it's just me and other honors students that are, say, majoring in business or majoring in, in certain engineering classes. Uh, so it's all folks that are the same um, major that are all honors students. And then also you have what's called honors seminars, which um, is 100% honors students that are put on by the honors program and they're kind of a more discussion based arts and humanities classes typically. So how it looks is you do a number of different honors classes throughout your four years and then your senior year you write an honors senior thesis um, that is kind of like your capstone course of your honors program that you can show grad schools or employers and say like this is kind of a summary of what I've learned over my past four years. And, and currently I'm actually doing that right now. Um, and it's been very, very beneficial to kind of learn more about that process, especially if I'm looking to grad school once I graduate. One thing I do want to talk about real quick is the thing that Brody, that Cody, oh my gosh, Cody brought up earlier about the residential learning communities. The honors program does have a couple different residential learning communities. So where you can live with all honors students, that's another option that you would want to look at on the housing website just to see if that's something that you're interested in. So. Awesome. Thanks, you both. So the last question, and this is going to be something I would like all of the uh, student ambassadors to touch on briefly. Uh, Rose asks, why should I go to CSU? Pressure's on. <laughs> because it's awesome. <laughs> There's so many reasons. I don't, I don't even know if I have a single answer. Um, just with my experience, I've absolutely loved it here. There's no school I'd rather be at. Um, Honestly, it's I, we'd love if you came to CSU. However, the best thing to do is just to go on a campus tour if you're able to and see if that campus fits with you. If it clicks with you, that's where you should go. But if it's CSU, that's great. You should come here because we're awesome, and you'd be awesome by affiliation. And we're, our mascot's a ram, so he's awesome too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for me, um, for me, I really wanted to go to school in Colorado, and that was a big thing for me. However, I knew that there was more than just picking a location. And what was great about CSU is that I was really able to find a good community and a good fit. And even though we're a little bit larger school and we have all these great big school opportunities, we really do have a small school feel. And that's what I appreciate more than anything about CSU um, is because I have all these things that will help me in my uh, career and in my life but I still have this tight-knit community, community that really loves their Rams. Um, <laughs> Sorry. So um, I actually kind of did pick CSU for the location. So I wanted to go to a school that I felt like um, I could see myself staying for the summers and getting a summer job, um, hanging out here, really living here and making it my community. And then even if I were to get a job offer um, from an internship that I've had during school after I graduate, something that I would you know enjoy living in this town or being close to the mountains or... Um, 
just staying here in Fort Collins. So that's kind of why I picked it. Um, and I definitely think whether you can come and visit or not, it's just something that you kind of have to know in your heart, whether it's for this reason or this reason, that CSU is or isn't for you. Um, so it's definitely a huge decision. So we hope that um, this kind of stuff will help you make that decision, whether it's a RAM chat visiting campus, um, or if we give you a call sometime and are asking if you have any questions, um, that's what we're here for. All right, first and foremost, before we end, I want to thank you all for joining us tonight um, and apologize for the really bumpy start we had. You know, there's going to be inevitable technical difficulties, I feel like, whenever you're trying to kind of set up and do a bunch of different computers here, so we apologize for that. If you did miss the beginning of Ram Chat, we're actually going to be posting this entire video tonight, um, so you'll have plenty of time to kind of peruse and look at that on YouTube. And then in the next couple of days and weeks here, we're actually going to post this on our website, and then we're going to have links by questions which will link you right up to the point in the video where we ask the question that you're curious about. So we really try and make this really intuitive for you and make it work so that when you want those questions answered again, you can go ahead and look at those. Um, so we probably, if we didn't answer some of your questions, we probably touched on it a little bit earlier. So definitely look at those. If your question was not answered tonight, we're actually going to go ahead and uh, answer some of these after. So you're going you're gonna to get your question answered, even if we didn't answer it here on Ram Chat. So thank you all so much. Thank you to all of our student ambassadors and Eleni from Student Financial Services for uh, hanging out with us for a couple hours here tonight. Um, and we hope to hear from you all soon. Have a wonderful rest of your day. If you have any other questions, feel free to contact us at admissions.colostate.edu slash ramchat. All right, have a